there's no denying that this looks a lot better than this. However, looks aren't why we hold the bow this way, it's just an added perk. And if it was just as easy as saying, okay, put your fingers here, 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 and here, then I would never see this ever again. So today I'm going to give you three exercises that, once completed, will ensure that you have a permanently perfect bow hold. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. <laughs> Now, first thing, I want to clarify that I teach the Franco-Belgian bow hold, as opposed to the Russian bow hold. And obviously nothing wrong with the Russian bow hold, but it's not what I teach, I don't know that much about it, so we are going to be sticking with the principles involving the Franco-Belgian bow hold in this video. Also, I'm going to be acting under the assumption that you already have a general idea of where the fingers are supposed to go on the bow before we start the exercises. This is not going to be a primer or a tutorial on how to hold the bow. That being said, let's do a quick review just for clarification. The thumb is supposed to not be completely outside and certainly not completely inside. The stick needs to be kind of on the facet in between. Thumb goes on the tip like so, right on top of the frog in the little space between the grip and the top of the frog right here. The middle finger is meant to go exactly across from the thumb, so not down here or above here, but right over the thumb. The index finger just kind of flops over to the side right here, nice and loosely. We don't want to curl the index finger over the stick. The ring finger just kind of falls wherever it falls. Don't fingertip any fingers except for the thumb, and then the pinky, which is the only other finger that is meant to be on the tip. Now, the reason why you or anybody else is struggling with their bow hold, either your fingers tend to spread apart or to straighten in ways that they shouldn't, which makes the hand stiff, or you tend to fingertip the bow, which gives you absolutely no control, or maybe your hand tends to move around the stick a little bit. The reason you're having those problems or any other problems is because you do not understand the function or the job of each of the fingers on the bow hold, because each finger has a particular function within bowing technique. So the first exercise we're going to start with, and I do want to emphasize right off the bat that these exercises are progressive, so please do them in the order in which I lay them out. But the first exercise is something I like to call the bow teeter-totter. Now, this first exercise is meant to teach the function of the thumb and the middle finger, which, as I said earlier, are supposed to be right across from each other in the bow hold, as well as the function of the pinky. So in the violin bow hold, the thumb and the middle finger are meant to be a sort of fulcrum on the bow. Like I've said before, playing the violin is essentially a manipulation of a series of levers and leverages. And of course, the bow is no different. And for those of you who don't know the terminology, the word fulcrum just refers to the point around which any lever moves. So if you think at the bottom of a playground seesaw or the axle of a catapult or the bow hand. As I am demonstrating here, this side of the bow weighs just as much as this side of the bow, which means that if I want to add a clear, even sound from frog to tip, I'm going to have to redistribute the weight of the bow across the bow stroke. And the center of this redistribution happens right here between the middle finger and the thumb. Of course, the middle finger and the thumb are just the fulcrum. They don't add or take away weight. They are just the point around which the lever moves. So the pinky's job is actually to help adjust the amount of weight you're using on the bow, for the most part, to remove weight from the bow. So in order to strengthen the position and stability of the fulcrum of the bow hand, as well as the strength and stability of the pinky, we are going to do this exercise. Except we're not going to start here. In fact, we're not even going to start with the bow. Instead, we're going to start with either a ruler or a pencil. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is start with a wooden ruler with holes in it, okay? The holes are actually very important. Don't get one with a little slide slot in it. Get one with holes. This is like a dollar at Target. So, you want to take your thumb and put the center of the tip of the thumb right in this second hole right here, okay? And then you want to take your middle finger, the pad of the middle finger, right across on the other side of the hole. I like to kind of have the crease of the knuckle right on top like this, as you see there. And then you can take your pinky and put it on top of this other hole like so. And then the key is, is to keep these two fingers loose enough that you can push the ruler up and down. 
like this. And this is a great way to test whether or not you're squeezing too much, okay? Because if you squeeze too much here, if you're trying to squeeze too much here, then it's going to be very difficult to do this. However, if you're not holding firmly enough, you're going to lose your spot on the bow, or in this case, the ruler. So this is a good, easy way to find the positions of the fingers, and you have a good place to look for when you push the pinky down, because we want to keep the pinky over the same spot no matter what angle we're pushing the pinky down. And once you get the hang of this motion, then it's time to move on to the pencil, which is much more similar to your bow. So similarly, we're going to put the pencil starting right on the tip of the thumb, in the center of the tip of the thumb, then take the middle finger, put it right across. I like to put it again in the groove of that knuckle, okay? And make sure that you have it like this. So we don't want the pencil on top of the thumb, that's cheating. And then put a similar similarly spaced distance between the middle finger and the pinky, so don't let it come out here. If you need to, draw a little dot on the pencil so your finger knows where to stay. And then you now get to control the amount of weight that you push against your pinky. Okay, and the goal is, is to keep the exact same relationship, which looks like this, of the middle finger and the thumb while doing this. Don't let the pencil, or later the bow, come on top of the thumb while you're doing this. It should stay just like this. Okay? And once you get the hang of this, then you're going to want to move on to your bow. We're not going to start down here at the frog because if you've never done this before, then that's going to be way too heavy. So instead, we are going to start about an inch below the balance point, which I demonstrated earlier. So first, find the balance point of your bow, pick it up with your violin hand, make sure, of course, that the frog is pointing to your right, go about an inch down and do the exact same thing. Tip of the thumb middle finger like here, and then pinky at the same distance as you had on the pencil and the ruler. And first just hold it like this, get comfortable with it, and then try to very slowly move the bow up and down with your pinky. Now once you get the hang of this motion, it's time to start moving the bow down towards the frog. And first thing I want to say is make sure you have complete control over this motion before you start moving towards the frog. This is about the point in which I need to tell you that these three exercises that I'm doing in this video, when I work with a private student, take anywhere from six months to sometimes over a year before we are finished working on them. This is not going to be an overnight process, so please be very patient with yourself. Well, I suppose that this is as good a time as any for plugs, so if you're looking for somebody to guide you through the harrowing, thorny landscape that is violin technique, then please shoot an email to admin at murphymusicacademy.org to sign up for your free trial lesson. Anyway, back to the technique. So once you get the basic motion down in this position here, then every week and only every week, you're going to want to move your hand down another inch. Go nice and slow, master at this position, and then this position until you get all the way down to the frog. And once you can do this comfortably at the frog, well, you've won the game. There's really no reason to practice this anymore, and it's time to move on to the next exercise. Now this, is the next exercise, and this is to practice the flexion of the fingers and the fingers working together, which is very important in bow technique, but I uh, didn't really have a good name for this. I just called it the uh, bow finger flexion exercise, but my sister suggested I should call it the bow jellyfish, so that's what I'm going to call it. This is the, uh, the bow jellyfish. Now, similar to the bow teeter-totter, we don't get to just jump into this whole hog. But we do get to start with the bow at least. So first thing we want to do is just practice this motion in the fingers. So similarly to what I said earlier in my last video about how we don't want our finger action in the left hand to be like this, we want it to be more like this. Very similarly, we want the flexion of the fingers in the bow hand to be more like this and not like this. So first thing we want to practice is just this movement of bringing the fingers to the thumb with the thumb on its spot on the bow. And then we are just going to lift the fingers like this and let them fall to their spots on the bow together. And that together part is important. So don't have the fingers being flopping around like this. They need to move in unison. And always make sure they're always landing on the right spots on the bow first. So once you get this motion down, then it's time to basically do that same motion, except now you're just gonna keep all of the fingers on the bow. So to demonstrate here, and we, we want to lift from these knuckles right here, we're going to do this. 
And if, if you are following the same kind of motion, your fingers should essentially be pointed in the same directions as you move. So the fingers aren't going to curl in. If your fingers are curling in, that's you doing this motion instead of this motion. So you can even practice trying to lift up your fingers by themselves and keep the finger tips pointed roughly in the same direction. And then just, you can support the bow here because it'll make it easier, just nice and slowly move the fingers up and just keep the thumb in the same place. It'll follow the fingers however it follows them. And once you get this nice and slow motion here, making sure there's a nice even position of all of the top bones of the fingers and when they come up they should be essentially flat with the back of the hand. See, nice and uniform. Then it's time to practice it out here. So holding the bow tip up. So we're just going to practice moving the bow in the exact same manner. The movement of the fingers is exactly the same, nice and slow. And once you get the hang of this, okay, again, make sure the fingers are staying roughly pointed in the same direction. Then it's time to try at different angles. So we hold here. This will be a little more difficult than this, but not too difficult because all of the weight is resting here and that's pretty easy to hold up. And then this, because of the weight on the pinky, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. But we want to make sure that the motion of the fingers is exactly the same as it is here. Now, once you get the hang of doing this nice and slowly and fully controlled at every angle, as you see, I'm not moving any of the positions of the fingers on the bow. They're not moving around while I do it. Once you get this motion down in all these positions, then it is time to try and speed it up. So you don't want to go too fast at first, but you do want to try going a little bit faster, kind of getting a pulsing motion. Then you want to practice it in different angles, maybe practicing it while rotating, and then you try going a little bit faster. And again, it takes several weeks, if not months, to do this until you get it to about here. And once you get it to about here, then it's time to move on to the next exercise. Now, for the third and final exercise in this Bohold gauntlet, we have something that probably many of you are already familiar with, Kole. Now, for the uninitiated, Kole is a little practice stroke that we do only with the fingers right at the frog, like so. What practicing this does is takes everything that we've done before with the bow teeter-totter and the bow jellyfish and turns it into something that now has to have a certain level of specificity of control. So I can wobble my bow around like this or I can wave my fingers like this and those are very good exercises for teaching the fingers their positions and flexibility but they don't practice any level of control. There's nothing I can really do wrong once I get the motion here but when I do cole, if I want to get a nice clean sound while playing right here at the frog where the bow is the heaviest using only the fingers and have it be very stable, then I'm going to have to be very controlled in my movements here and that is the key. So how to go about practicing this? Like the bow teeter-totter, we are not going to start right off with the motion. We're actually going to put the violin down and you might have noticed that the motion that I do in Kole is very similar to the uh, bow jellyfish motion, and it is, which is why we do it first. But the trick with this is I actually have to still have the bow move horizontally across the string. I don't want to push the bow down or else you'll get a very harsh choking sound. So the first thing we want to do is just make sure that we can actually move the bow back and forth as we would in a normal bow stroke using only the fingers. The best way to do this is, again, Put the bow in your hand here. Try not to have it as much on the hair as possible, but you know, it's gonna be a little unavoidable. If you, if you really are worried about touching the hair, put a cloth on your hand, and then just practice moving the bow back and forth on your hand. Once you get the basic motion down, then it's actually time to start trying to do it at the frog. If you have a lot of trouble at the frog, you can try doing the motion somewhere a little higher in the bow as well, but I've found that many of my students can actually jump straight from doing this to practicing at the frog, so that's what I'm going to go for right now. So we're going to start with a down bow cole stroke, and to do this, there's a couple things you need to make sure you have in setup, and setup is everything, so please do not skip steps. First things first, contract your fingers, like the first half of the bow jellyfish motion, right? All fingers nice and flat with the back of the hand up here. 
and then place the bow at the frog, and by at the frog I mean right above the metal, right here. <laughs> Don't go up here, that's actually too high. So, right here, right up where your hand is. And then you want to just let the bow sit nice and firmly on the string. And the trick to Cole is we kind of almost want it to be like a, a pizzicato that we do with our bow. So, we set it up like this, alright, nice and low, right next to the frog. And then, of course, we want to practice that smooth pushing horizontal motion instead of pushing it downwards. So actually, we're going to start very slowly, and forgive yourself and forgive me, this is not going to sound very good, but you want to get the motion first. So contract, place, and then just kind of almost pet the string with your fingers. Once you have this motion basically down and you're not like <coughs> pressing too hard while you're doing it and you're kind of getting something of a somewhat even sound while doing this motion, then basically all you need to do is just speed it up slightly. One of the biggest traps that people fall into when trying to learn cole is thinking that the motion has to be very sudden and very jerky. It actually isn't as fast as you think it is. So just go slightly faster than what you were doing here. So again, set yourself up. Don't press too hard, and then... And the other key to this is, once you do the cole stroke, you actually want to release the, the bow from the string so it rings. You see, I'm not jerking the fingers, I'm just... Nice and... So just practice getting the down bow motion first, because that is often the most difficult. So once you've got the sense of the down bow motion of the cole, you can get a clear ringing sound on the open A string with that then it is time to move to the up bow. With the up bow, it's the exact opposite. You're going to start in the extended position of the fingers. So fully contracted here, fully extended here. And basically you want to start about an inch or so up the bow, wherever you would have left off when you finished the down bow stroke of the cole. So I did this. So I'm about there in the bow. I'm going to place the bow right down, maybe an inch and a half above the frog. And then basically you just want to follow a mirror image of what you did before. Then you want to just practice going back and forth, down bow, up bow, and you want to try to develop a completely consistent motion down and up. So first off, make sure that you're not using any part of your arm. It can be very tempting for people when they do this to get the arm involved in the motion. The only motion of the arm that needs to be involved is a slight lifting this way when you're finished so the string can ring. But other than that, we want only the fingers and maybe just a tiny bit of sympathetic motion from the wrist, but basically just the fingers. So you want to turn this into this very, very systematic, very consistent, almost robotic motion. And always place the bow back down on the string before you start, never attack from the air. And once you can get a very consistent sound and very consistent motion on the open A string, then it's time to practice it on fingered notes. So we have A. Then we have B. And it's much more difficult to get a ringing sound on your fingered notes. So first off, you've got to make sure your finger is first in tune, because that will help. And then make sure you've pressed the string quite firmly. And then you have to take even more care of being very even in the stroke across the string as you do the finger. You'll also discover that certain fingers are a little bit more difficult than others. Once you can do this, then there is one final test of your cole ability. For those of you doing the Suzuki method, you should be familiar with the twinkle variations at the beginning of book one, or at least I'd hope so, considering it's at the beginning of book one. So, I want you to go back to variation B, and you're going to practice that in cole. And that is it. 
Once you've completed these three exercises, no matter how long it takes you, you are going to have a very stable and good looking bow hold where all of the fingers remain in their proper places effortlessly, as well as a much deeper understanding of the function of each finger on the bow, as well as greater sound production and bow control. In any case, try out these exercises and see how they work for you. They have worked for quite literally every single one of my students, but then again, they don't really have a choice on whether they do them or not. So in any case, I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you that there is no pleasure in mediocrity. So please take your time when learning these exercises. It will be worth it. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.